Welcome back to another episode of What Are You Made Of with your boy, Mike C-Rock. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you, you listeners, the support that you've given me and my movement and the Rocket Fuel movement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please share with your friends, family, coworkers. Uh, I, I really appreciate any help I can get to get the word out. We're going to make a big impact on this earth. And if we can find some aliens, we'll make a difference on them too, because I'm not stopping just at Earth. <laughs> so you want to make people crazy, start talking about aliens. So uh, I brought a good friend of mine on today, Charles Vest. Uh, you know, I met him through Greg Reed and uh, just you know, phenomenal guy, you know, and you could tell when people are good people when you meet them. Uh, I can anyway. And Charles is one of those guys. Uh, he's the master of introductions, known as an original pioneer of the CBD movement. He has influenced countries to accept the power of hemp and cannabinoids. Charles Vest has received many accolades for speaking and motivating in venues across the nation, including the keynotes, and has been recently recognized by the Napoleon Hill Foundation for his creation of Think and Grow Rich, Inspire San Diego, and is now a certified mastermind association member. I think I am too. Uh, currently, Charles has one of the most popular rooms on Clubhouse called Nailing Your Introductions, Turning Your Story into Sales. And uh, guys, help me with a big round of applause that Charles won't be able to hear. Welcome, Charles, to the What Do You Made Up podcast. What's up, Charles? Oh, I love it. It's a standing ovation, actually. That's terrific. I appreciate you, <laughs> C-Rock. <laughs> so, look, you know, we always we have a ritual here of starting the show with the, the, the question uh, of the show's namesake. What are you made of? Hmm. You know, I, I just realized that you were going to actually ask me that question. And so I just put about five minutes of thought into it. And I came up with these words. I'm made of gratitude. I'm made of contribution. I'm made of uh, intuition and most importantly, a positive attitude. I love it, man. That's you like, you read my shirt, didn't you? Uh, no, you actually I did it, but you know, <laughs> good minds think alike. Yeah. My <laughs> wife made this shirt for me because I talk about that a lot. I talk about gratitude a lot because since I've been practicing gratitude, I've always been thankful. I've always said, please and thank you and all that. But, but really when it comes down to when I wake up in the morning, the first thought that comes through my mind is, uh, you know, if, even if it's not a day that I'm looking forward to, they're like, oh shit, it's more, yes, thank you. That's the first thing that comes out of my mouth that it changed everything for me. Absolutely. And, you know, you know I, so, I agree with you 100%. You know, it's a, it's, oh, it's, oh shit, or oh shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's what you get to do <laughs> instead of what you have to do. Yeah. And we hear it all the time, but like the people that actually practice it, like really experience the, the benefits that come from it, man. I mean, Look, I've had some really difficult times over this last year. We've had a, the best year financially, the company and all that. But, you know, people let me down, people leaving, like things like that, that just aren't ready for the rocket ship ride. And, you know, but it's like back in the past, I used to like let it bother me for a little longer than I do now. And now it's like opportunity. Where's opportunity? There's something here that I need to learn or get or fuel or something. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so gratitude is a big thing. So, Charles, take me back, man. I mean, take me back growing up. I want to hear about where you came from and what kind of things you went through as a child, teenager, or whatever, that, that the ingredients that you, that made Charles Vest. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your podcast. I, I have been on many podcasts, but I've never had to wait as long as you made me wait to be on yours, which just <laughs> simply is a testament to how popular you are. And I had no problem waiting a month to get my slot on the C Rock When You Made Up podcast. So, you know, that tells a lot about who you are and the fact that people are always trying to get you to moderate their rooms, pull you up in clubhouse, all that. There's, there's something really special about you right now. I know that you've done a lot of Thank things you, in the man. past, but your vibration right now is at as is just really resonating at a high level. So Thank congrats, you, man. man. I really appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. And I just give that credit. My stepfather passed away in January of 2019. And uh, mm -hmm. suddenly in two weeks after that, my brother Casey and I felt this, you know, I was starting a mission and I was starting it, but I didn't really have the passion and energy and spirit that I had. And George, my stepfather was a really, really passionate guy when you got him talking about football, baseball, hunting, fishing, or crabbing, which we do in <laughs> Maryland. And uh, two weeks later, man, and I, again, I don't, I say this all the time. I don't expect people to believe me. I don't care if they believe me. I'm just telling you like it is this, this energy came inside of me that I like, I just can't put it out now. And mm -hmm. so I'm glad for that feedback. Thank you very much that, that you're noticing that. And, you know, I just Absolutely. feel like unstoppable right now to the mission that I'm going to be on to that I'm on to, to inspire and impact people. So Charles, thank you for that, man. Absolutely. Well, you've already inspired and impacted me. Every and I've only I've only had the opportunity to spend a, a you know a couple of days with you in a mastermind environment, and everybody 
talks about you know the effects that sea rock has on them so why don't i just interview you for the next half <laughs> <laughs> we can do that we can do that too. <laughs> but anyway I, i'll just go ahead and, and, and tell a little bit about myself um, i was born a poor black child i've always wanted to say that you're black <laughs> i know i didn't know that I was, I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone yesterday and he and he said the same thing he says you're black i said yeah <laughs> i didn't even know i mattered <laughs> oh, man. but anyway so anyway i was i was born in, in i really really didn't have a tough life growing up. I, I was born a, you know, in San Diego. So how tough can it be to be born in Santa California? But I did have an identity crisis that has stuck with me for most of my life. And that is that my parents thought it was a good idea since I was born in a, you know, predominantly black neighborhood, kind of like, you know, the, the movie Friday, that was my neighborhood. Everyone kind of hung out, did barbecues, had fun. We all, we all got our haircuts in the same garage. So that kind of tells you <laughs> right there. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, that was cool, but my parents thought it'd be a good idea if I went to a white church. And so here I had this whole, you know, cultural upbringing and, and then, then go to a white church. So for me, it was cool. I mean, I had the best of both worlds until I realized that there was something different between the two uh the music atmospheres. the yeah. music man the music the food we we don't even need to talk about thanksgiving right so anyway <laughs> there was a big there was a big difference in the cultures and as i went through uh high school uh you know it was really popular to be you know the tall black kid in in, in a predominantly white high school because you know basketball football and everything but then th something happened where it wasn't so popular anymore in the places that i hung out with and the way that I got popularity was actually through drugs and, uh, and, and alcohol and things like that. And it was just trying to fill a hole. Like I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to, you know, hang out with the cool cats, you know, going to the drive-in theater. And what are you going to do when you're at a drive? You remember those? Drive yeah. Are, are you yeah. old enough yeah, to remember. go to drive -in? Yeah, okay. I, I, I remember. <laughs> 44, hey, by the way, 44 on Super Bowl Sunday, baby. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Who are you rooting Thank for, you. by the way? Uh, I don't care. Good game. Right. Good game. Good I'm for rooting for. Either way, I'll be happy. It's just good just to have something else to look at on TV, right? Instead yeah, of all the yeah. other crap. But anyway, you know, the thing about what ha I was thinking about my, my life in a nutshell and, and 30, I, I have 32 years of drug and alcohol recovery. So I've been sober for 32 years. But what that means is that 33 years ago, my life was, I, I was treated like a dog. 33 years ago. And so the difference that one, one year and a couple decisions could make in your life. And, you know, I was remember that my, my mom, uh, she was looking for me because I, I had been missing for a while and someone told her where I was. And it was, I was actually in someone's garage that they would open up the door to let me out during the day and then close the door and lock it at night. So I wouldn't steal anything. And my mom came and brought, you know, a pan of lasagna so that I can eat something like a dog. And, uh, and that was kind of like the low the elaborate that part. now you got to elaborate on that. Like, what do you mean by you were in a garage and somebody had to let you like, what, what? Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, when, when I was, I was a drug addict, you know, hope to die drug addict. And I, I just ruined my life all the way to the point where all I could think of was how I was going to get high again, you know, the typical story of a drug addict. And, yeah. and, uh, but I, you know, I got kicked out of my house, got kicked out of everywhere. And my car was, I, you know, I lived in my car until they towed the car away. I mean, it was literally that, that bad. And a, a, a friend that I, I don't even know if it was a friend. I just, the person said, you can, you can sleep in my garage on my couch, but they still were afraid that I would steal something from them. So they, they would, they would, you know, I, I thought it was cool. I mean, I had a place to stay. It was warm and the couch mm -hmm. and all that. I was stealing cable from the neighbors. I mean, it was great, but uh, they actually closed and locked the door at night and then unlocked it in the morning for me to, to go wow. out and do whatever. Jeez. Yeah. So from that, and, and I'll tell you the, the really quick story. Uh, I, I don't share it that much, but you know, I don't know if you remember, there were some commercials on TV where you can go to this place and get, and, you know, and get, you know, drug free and then just have a couple of days there. And then a couple of two day follow-ups, it was a commercial about it. Right. And mm -hmm. I, and I, and I saw this commercial and a friend, a friend of mine, the drug dealer that I was hanging out with, cleaning his garage so I can, you know, get something. Uh, his wife showed back up from, from being gone for three days. And she said that she was cured. And, and I said, well, how, how are you cured? She said, I went to this place and, and they let me out after three days and I'm cured. And so I believed her and asked her where the place was. She, she gave me the address. I went there. And then it turns out that when I, when I showed up, they, they said, they said, yeah, sure. Come on in. You know, this is, you know, yeah, this is a three day, program they lied right to my face 
And, uh, and it turns out it was a three month recovery deal. And that's how I went from being a drug addict to, you know, being in recovery. They pretty much kidnapped me and, uh, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the time you're probably cussing them. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. I just want to sign up for that three day program. And, and, uh, you know, the guy says, this ain't no fucking three day program. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I, Idiot. Now, now that you dropped the f-bomb which you can on the show it's fine i gotta i gotta go back this has nothing to do with that part but i wanted to go back to the church thing for a second i was in a clubhouse room last night yep. and a kimmy uh, i don't know if you've met her or not yet but she uh she held this room and it was about all you need is an audience of one mm. so many people are worried about how many followers and how many people are in their room and they get hung up on that and and really it is about an audience of one and it, it, it became a really spiritual room for last night. And uh, one thing about it was awesome was there was a lot of black people in there too. Right. It wasn't just like a, a white church thing. It was a, and man, let me tell you, it something. was just church. Right? No, let me tell you something though. No, no, no. There's a difference. There's a difference. Let me tell you why, which is awesome. Like I'm sitting there listening. There's a guy named Dion who I haven't met yet. He was praying and we, they were starting to pray over people that would come up on stage. Right. Mm. And man, let me tell you something. I thought I was a good prayer guy. Like I thought I could <laughs> say a prayer and I was telling my wife, I'm like, listen to this guy, Dion, like the mm. energy and passion, man. And you know what? So many people don't do that. Mm. They, they lay back and they're praying really soft and, and, and man, you gotta, you gotta like, oh man, it just inspired me so much. And so wait, I said something about the music being different. I'm like, man, I want to go to Dion's church. You know? like, <laughs> oh, you uh, get sanctified, brother. Yeah, you I love it, man. It, 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 and I was just so awesome. And, you know, growing up for me, I was in uh, Southeastern Pennsylvania outside of Philly. And I, I grew up in a, a, a one school first in elementary that was all Latino kids. All the, the their parents worked in the, the mushroom houses up there. And okay. so they migrated here, worked in the mushroom houses. And I lived in and played soccer and, and, and speak a little Spanish and everything. And then I got moved at 11. And when I, when I decided to leave my dad's house and move back with my mom, I actually moved in. You decided, or was it decided for you? No, no, no. I decided that's one of my signature stories. I could tell you later, got but it. Um, I, I moved. And, and when I went to this place, uh, it was, it was uh, mostly white kids and I'm, I'm Italian. Mm -hmm. I'm, I consider myself a white guy, but uh, mostly Italians. And then there was uh, a, a small group of black people and uh, right. man. And I, I thought I was supposed to hang out with them because I was hanging out with the Latino guys and it wasn't. Sure. So I went and I, man, I got my ass kicked <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. Like I'm trying to be friends with you guys. What is going on here? And they <laughs> well, thought, that was how they said hello. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just funny. Like as a kid growing up and going through these different things. And I, I just, no, and I made some of like my best, best friends with uh, the guy, same guys that were kicking my ass at first, but maybe that was just like them. Like that's how they showed me. I don't know what it was, but it was, it was mm. just an experience. Like you made me think about that as, as you were telling about growing up in a, you know, mostly white school and all that, but uh, that ran through my head. So I just wanted to share that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, these, you don't realize how much those experiences between the age of seven and 12, for instance, how much they actually shape your entire life, your entire belief system. And, you know, when you have kids, you know, I, I have, you know, my kids are, are, are biracial, interracial kids. And so it's interesting how, you know, I, the, the way that I was raised and, and, and the experience I had, I wanted to give that to my kids, but it's impossible because we keep going through different experiences. So, so what it is that I did, was able to teach my kids is this, <laughs> you're going to like this. If it's good to be white, then be white. If it's good to be black, then you're black, really? dude. <laughs> on that, <laughs> I'm talking like about, sales, I'm talking man. about like on the, on, on the application, you know, my kids got oh, okay, you know, a good okay. deal in college because they said, <laughs> I said, look, for college apps, you're black, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, you know what? I just found out I did one of those 23 of me's the other day and it came back finally. And uh, it said that I have uh, 50, you know, 55 percent Italian and then a little bit of Greek and English and all that. And then it said African. Nice. And then, and then it dialed in. I'm like, yeah, man, I knew it. I knew it. I, I loved, listen, man, I loved hip hop music growing up and I, I couldn't figure out why. It's just not, just not just that it sounded good, but some people hate the sound of it. I love it. I couldn't figure it out. Now I figured it out. I'm like, yes, I know why. So yeah, I, I, until you find out that it's South Africa, but anyway, I'm still happy for <laughs> you, bro. Africa. No, it was actually East Africa. <laughs> okay, good. I'm not sure what country was there. So I have to look that up. I didn't get a chance to look that yet, but Dude, oh, you've man. always been you've always been a brother to me. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that Thanks, if people were just listening to our voice, they would figure you were the bro and I was, you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> the white guy. Oh man. <laughs> so, hey, so Charles, let's let's yes, talk sir. about your book for a minute, and then I want to get into the clubhouse conversation. But uh, this the ninja sales secrets because mm -hmm. I took two of them that I learned in clubhouse one one of your rooms I attended and shared it with my team. The nine one one four one one. 
Mm. And the one that's exactly why I'm here. That's yes. exactly why I'm calling. Those two specifically work for my my people in the mortgage industry when they're calling real estate agents. Um, Excellent. So so yeah. So so talk about your book a little bit and your background sure. on that. Sure. So uh, I've been in sales for over 40 years now. You know, my age is my secret weapon. I'm 60 years old now. And, and what I've found is that most people do not learn the simple, you know, ABCs of sales. They, they have some notion that if you just call enough people, you'll get enough sales. And, and, and the fact is that if you learn some simple things that we learned long time ago, how to say thank you, how to use a person's name, how to understand how decisions are making, and most importantly, how to know when to shut up, you know, and those type of things are, are what I taught in, or, or what I teach in the book Ninja Sales Secrets. It just, it just was important for me to get something out short and sweet. That's how my attention span is. So I also did an audio version of it and it is 57 minutes total for audio time. So you can pretty much get it on a you know, ride to and from work. But the thing about it, what I love what you said is that there, there's 20 simple uh, suggestions on how to connect with your customers and make a difference right away. You don't have to start from the beginning. And so those two that you're talking about, the 911411, great tool that I learned. And that is just simply, if you're trying to get into a, a new account and you know everyone's trying to say the same thing, I'll do what it takes to earn your business, blah, blah, blah. Well, I found out when I was trying to get into a guy's account, I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll be your 911 or your 411. If you just want information, and I don't care if it's about anything, you call me, I'll be your 411. But if there's an emergency, I don't care what time, day or night, if we've never done any business, give me a call. I'll be your 911 for you. I promise I'll pick up the phone and do whatever I can. And so when I left, I said, so remember, I'm either your 911 or your 411. And, and they remember that. And yep. so that was how that worked out. And you use it in the mortgage industry. Huh? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially, look, real estate agents trying to get deals done. Sometimes the deals go wrong with another lender and we can be that 911. And then other Absolutely. times... Look, real estate agents don't know the mortgage business. They, they don't know a lot of the, the terms and the things that, that are required to get a borrower approved and what have you. And there's the 411 information. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's interesting yeah. about, about this is that the, the, the secret sauce behind it is when you say that you are not, you are not just trying to help yourself out with a sale. You're actually letting the customer know that you are there to be of service and of contribution for them. Yep. And, uh, and so I remember I was trying to get into a casino and the guy called me at 7.30 on a Friday night from a major casino here in San Diego. And he says, I know that you're not, you're probably not going to be able to help me, but I have nowhere else to turn. You told me you'd be on my 911, so here it is. And so, I mean, that's a great call to have. And the thing about it is whether you succeed or fail, as long as you do everything you can, you've already won their business. And so yeah. he had a he had a situation where all of his casino machines, all of his slot machines were going to uh, actually stop working because of a license situation. The license had expired and they couldn't get the key or code for the new license. So they literally were going to have to shut down all their slot machines for a weekend. That's like a billion dollars or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I said, I'll see what I can do. And it turns out I was able to call his another casino literally 20 miles away. And they actually said that this guy could borrow their key for the weekend and, uh, and I became a hero, which meant that I was able to be a hero for most of the casinos in San Diego, just from that one time of saying 911, 411 and actually coming through for them. And what were you selling at that time? What sort uh, of tech technology, you know, I, okay. I sold, so the, uh, the, you know, Indian gaming casinos, they were way ahead of the time for technology. And so I sold them all their wireless and then all their, all their, um, artificial intelligence and, and all that cool stuff. So awesome. It was great. Awesome. And then the other one was, uh, that's exactly why I'm calling. Yeah. So why don't you tell us how that one works there? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you how that Mike. works. So, <laughs> so like in the mortgage industry, um, you know, we would call a real estate agent and say, listen, uh, I just want to reach out to you, introduce myself and really find out what's your biggest challenge when it comes to getting your clients financing. Like what, what, what is your biggest thing you're dealing with? And let them answer the question. Mm -hmm. And when they say, you know, what's funny about that? That's exactly why I'm calling you. Well, if that's exactly my specialty. And mm -hmm. so you, you, you got them right into it and they're like, oh yeah. And it perks up there. Yeah. So I love that one. Um, those are my two favorites so far. And uh, right away we, you know, I have meetings with my team every day and right away we put it right into play. 
mm. and I'm waiting on the feedback from it. So I'll have to let you know how that goes. So. I'm very grateful that you're using, using those skills. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Look, you got to get ingredients from every single person you meet. Everybody has some kind of thing to offer to, that can change your life. And, you know, I'm always open and sponging, man. So, <laughs> um, so, okay. Now let's talk about clubhouse. Um, All right. Up a topic about clubhouse and, you know, what basically was it coming out and proving you're you're an expert or an idiot basically is that what you said you know what it's very close that's very close and i i know i just threw it at you at the very last minute because it's kind of dawned on me i, I actually got this expression from golf and now i've just i've, I've extrapolated it to clubhouse and here's did you, did, the, here's the expression did you, know that, did you know i was a big golfer no i didn't yeah like i, I i'm like like if, well right now i'm probably 15 because i haven't played much because of everything i'm in, into but i got down to like a three something index wow that's yeah, so excellent Great analogy. Go ahead. <laughs> well, perfect. Then you'll get it. So you can you can replace the word clubhouse with golf, and now you understand where it came from. So here's the here's the saying: clubhouse will either promote you or expose you. Yeah. And 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 the reason why it came from golf is because in the first part of a golf game, you know, a, a round of golf, you know, you got 18 holes. First two holes, everyone's acting cool. Everyone's doing you know playing playing you know their best manners and all that jazz but what happens is as you're playing golf you realize that are they honest are are, are they going to fudge or how do they handle a, a, you know uh, adversity uh, all these things yeah. start coming out right yeah, and, you, yeah. and by the time you're done time. exactly so by the time you're done we now get the real picture you know are they trying to pick up the the girl in the in the little roach coach that comes around i mean this is all kinds of things that happens in that four hours so just like clubhouse you know, or just like golf clubhouse will, as I, I found it will either promote you or expose you. You're either going to, people are going to see the real you. You're going to shine through because of your heart, you know, your real desire to be of contribution and whatever it is that you're doing, or sooner or later, it's going to expose the real you. Uh, and that could, that that's either going to be great or not great. Yeah. We've seen uh, several uh, instances recently. I saw, I'm not going to say any names right now, but there's been several uh, incidents and then pe man, people blowing up on it and they'll call you out so quick. The problem I have with it is that it's a space that, you know, you know, I, I always look at myself and I, I don't, I don't like to point fingers at anybody or blame people because like, who am I to do that? And I've been down the road before where I've said something I shouldn't, and I've probably done things I shouldn't. Right. And I, I think it's very, very sensitive environment and, and highly volatile environment. It can be mess up and say something wrong. And a lot of times if you apologize, people don't take your apology because they're like, oh, you're just apologizing. And then that genuineness, you can't get the genuineness through. So, yeah, man, I mean, I, I think that uh, it, you have to be very, very conscious of what you're saying, when to say something, what rooms to be in. Um, and when you are in certain rooms, what not to say and how like to come across, because some people come across as preaching and, and, uh, yeah, just di different things, man. It's just, well, it's it, it really does. It really does expose if you are there to be a giver or a taker. Yeah. And, and it's raw because it's not like you're, you're showing the recorded version of you. This is the live raw version of you. There's really no take backs kind of thing. You can't, can't, can't rewind yep. it. Yep. And also people, because they don't have their face, they, they can be somewhat anonymous and, and really, you know, feel significantly strong because their voice is heard. Yep. And that's a challenge that, that is in clubhouse. And that's, and that's why I remind people that you know you you choose where where you end up in clubhouse but you also need to be authentic as you're going from room to room some people are trying to fake it and you know i remember one guy i was actually in a room that you were in and there was a guy who really took control of the room and it wasn't his room he had no manners no yeah. etiquette right he yeah, just yeah. talked forever and then uh he was basically preaching and yeah. and at first it was, oh, this guy's really cool. That makes a lot of sense. Well, as soon as somebody said that, that just gave the, you know, the yeah. okay to just take over. And then I went and looked at his profile. And at the bottom of his profile, it's like, donate money to me. <laughs> I'm a, you know, at the top, it's I'm a seven figure uh, coach and an eight figure coach. And at the bottom, it's like, here's my, my number to, or, or my, my link to donate money to me. Any amount counts. Well, what is that really saying? Right, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, you know, here's the thing. So the easiest way to do it is just be genuine all the time, all the time. And that's the way I am, man. And if I mess up, if somebody, so sometimes I'll say some things like, I don't know, I can't think of anything right now, but somebody might bring it to, oh, here's one. 
I was on Clubhouse and they and I did they didn't call me out on it, but they called out somebody else for saying guys all the time, like hey guys, because I say hey guys all the time. Sure. Even my wife, the kids, like everybody. And yeah, they they, uh, they brought that topic up. Some ladies brought it up, and I said, well, you know, I don't mean anything by when I say guys, and you know, but it made me start to think. But the th- the other thing is, I asked them. I said, well, where's the line? Like I don't know where the line is to know what to say and what not to say. And, and if somebody gets upset with, you know, I, I don't know. So that topic came up and guys was one that, that came up and I, I, I don't think I got called on. I think it was somebody else when I was just listening, but I, I chimed in and just gave my thoughts on it. And I, you know, I don't get in an argumentative state. I just kind of throw questions out there to people and let them discuss mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the key is just to be genuine regardless, anywhere you go, I do that. And if people don't like me fine, if they have an issue with me and they want to talk about it, I'm open to talking about anything. But well, you don't mind making mistakes. You, no. you, and it's not like you just go and hide when you make a mistake. You make a mistake. You say something that might have offended someone or whatever, and you, you own up to it. And, that's, and that actually, you know, promotes you in many people's eyes that you are, you know, an honest guy. Because real people make mistakes. Real people yeah. say things that might offend others, but they, they hold on to it and they go, I apologize for that. But people that aren't real, they are just looking for a way for them to come out strong and hard and be of significance. And at the end of the day, it, you don't have to worry about pretending or trying to like fit in if you're mm. just always genuine. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? You know, obviously you have different, different manners and different things that you go to different places, but at the end of the day, just being yourself, period. I love that. Um, and I think that we're also seeing some of the experts that are really, really good and have a lot to say. They're gaining a lot of traction, a lot of followers, but also staying on there probably 15 hours a day is making a difference for some of them. Well, there's a lot of tricks of the trade that I'm finding that people are doing out there. And I don't know if you're yeah. if you're yeah. one of them or not that no, you know, so uses that, VAs and things like that, but it, it no, is interesting. I know I don't have time. I, I do have VAs with other things that I do, but not this. Um, but but sitting in several rooms at one time and mm-hmm. and different mm-hmm. things like that. I mean, but good for them. They're figuring that out because it now is the time to try to 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 grasp uh, real estate, so to speak, in that. Uh, with you, know, followers, you know, you know, really, really quick. You know, I'm, I'm one of the pioneers of the CBD craze, right? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I started it back in uh, in 2011, and I don't think there's too many people that have been doing CBD as long as myself. But I'm looking, I've seen real similarities. And right now, people are finding Clubhouse, and, and, and they are trying to do a big land grab with Clubhouse, just like with CBD, there's this, there was this big land grab, and it went to a point where, you know, if you went to an airport, two people had heard of what CBD is, and you know now if you go to an airport and talk to someone, pretty much everybody knows what it is. But that whole time between the two and the and and the hundred percent, that's where we are right now. And so the same thing with Clubhouse. Most people don't know what Clubhouse is. I'm I'd say two out of uh, twenty people maybe yeah, know what Clubhouse yeah. is. And so this big land grab that's happening right now is an opportunity. Yes, take advantage of it, but the you know do it with integrity. And that's yeah. that's what I look for. I look for rooms that have integrity that are integral and when i see your name out there your name is synonymous with with integrity and that's and that's why you can just start a room right now and have a hundred people in it within 10 minutes because they they follow integrity and i think well, that we can we can we can uh, be the example of that you know forward. how you, you know how you recognize that though charles how you recognize that by being having you know integrity yourself so that's how you oh, recognize yes. that mm-hmm. yeah and same thing when people say bad things about people they're recognizing that in themselves right uh yes you know, so I, I give it right back to you man i mean I, uh, it's an honor ever to, anytime to share stage with you and and all that and uh, i'm so glad we got to meet in vegas and uh through greg so the last thing uh, two things one i want to i want to tell the audience how they can engage with you and how they can get in touch with you and then i'm going to ask you the final question okay well it's it's not hard to find me because i'm lucky enough to to have my name as a domain, charlesvest.com. So it's easy to find me there. Uh, but what I really am excited about is, is my actual clubhouse room with the nailing your clubhouse introductions. It is my, it is my uh, gift that I have to teach people how to introduce yourself in, in a minute or so. And the more people that I can help, the more I feel of being of contribution, like making a difference on the planet. You know, working with Greg Reed and, and the secret knock uh, as an MC, you kind of learn how to introduce, you know, it's been 15 years. And so it's if funny not, though. Greg will teach you. <laughs> he, he will, or, or he'll get rid of you, right? Just like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we, we have these talents that maybe we don't realize how good we are at things, 
But then all of a sudden it shows up that here's an opportunity to actually take advantage of your talent. Yeah. And that's what happened with me. You know, I've, I've always kind of lit, watched people and it's like, well, I'm not really that, uh, that mortgage guy, or I'm not really that, you know, mind over matter person or whatever, but you know what I am good at is teaching people how to introduce and introductions. So, you know, I, it's, I guess it's just me saying, you know, find your gift and go for it. There'll be an opportunity for you to shine. So if you want to get a hold of me, you can you can find me on Clubhouse, but you can also find me on Facebook. Just 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 do my name. I happen to have my actual name on Facebook, and uh, you can't miss this beautiful uh, this beautiful uh, darker than light face that I have here. In case you're just listening to my voice, I look like C Rock, but uh, taller. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You look like me in the summertime. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I listen. I do get in the sun. I mean, I I get nice, nice and dark tan. Well, I'll tell you, but you know, I I I think that God made two mistakes. I'm going to tell you what those two. They're really fast. Two quick mistakes that I if I think if he had a chance to do it over again, he'd do it. Number one, I think that if he had a chance to do it over again, white people would tan dark and dark people would tan lighter. That would be <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> Uh, and then the second mistake is this one's just just since i was 12 years old i thought of this i think that he should have made farts colorful that, that's that's the second mistake i think he had a chance to do it over again oh man well look let's end on this here let's okay this. here's the question yes sir what does that rocket fuel concept mean to you and which of course is means to store anything that goes against the grain that's trying to stop you or slow you down you store it in your tank instead of your trunk and use it as rocket fuel what does that mean to you and what has it meant to you in your life charles mm. You know, take taking advantage of of the God given gifts that you have, recognizing them and realizing that, you know, to get a rocket off the ground, you know, 75 percent of the energy happens during the liftoff. And then you can kind of go with the with the propelled uh, 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 the propelled motion that you have created from that liftoff. And so understand and this is what i have understand it takes a while to get a to, to lift off it takes energy to start something to get something off the ground but if you put forth that in that energy and you really believe in what can happen from your efforts anything is possible fantastic thank you so much for being here charles i appreciate you man look forward to doing some things with you in the future and uh anything you ever need just reach out to your boy c rock Absolutely, man. Congratulations on your podcast too and everything else you have going on there. I'm just happy to be a part of uh, your success. Thank you. Guys, you've been listening to the What Are You Made Of podcast with your boy, Mike C-Rock. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your support. Go get that Rocket Fuel book, MikeCrock.com forward slash book, MikeCrock.com forward slash book. It will change your life by showing you how to convert setbacks and become unstoppable. Grant Cardone wrote the forward, shared what it meant to him. And I want you to read that as well. So go get that book. Come back and see us. Subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Or if you'd like to watch these, go to my YouTube channel, Mike C. Rock Scirocco, where you can watch and see Charles's beautiful face. Oh, we're actually on camera? Well. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so go do that for us, guys, and for yourself. And share with your friends, family, coworkers. Until next time, be great. 